I just feel like maybe I should introduce myself more to people. I, I don't like doing that every time. It's like, hey, my name's Alexis. That's fair, Welcome though. Welcome to the podcast. I, it's because I know you that I was like, oh, it's Alexis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But for, like, people that maybe don't know me and they happen to listen, then they're like, who the fuck is this girl? Yeah. Like, (laughs) who? (laughs) Why is she doing a podcast? (laughs) Who is this? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, my name's Alexis, and welcome to the podcast. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Javier Hernandez Quiste. Cool. Where are you from? I'm originally from Mexico City. Um, but I came here when I was eight years old. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know, I did know that, but now that you reminded me, I'm just like, oh yeah. It goes, yeah, yeah I feel like it goes by people because everyone's like, have you just from LA? Because I think the accent, like, yeah. even though we don't think we have an accent. We, we do. We do. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I for sure do. Yeah. I like say like a lot. We do. And then yeah. it's like a little bit of like that i guess like surf like very chill yeah yeah like i always sound like i'm high so everybody thinks that i'm high yeah that's yeah. what it is it's like a slow pace that yeah i talk i didn't tell you this before we started the podcast but this is my second interview today nice look at you <laughs> yeah. celebrity so i did one for like this newspaper in mexico city okay and like they contacted me through relatives and stuff, and they just wanted to ask what it was like for an immigrant in the United States. So they were interviewing other people, and I just went in and they asked me. Cool. Where was it at? Weirdly enough, it was, uh, you know where the new Beverly is? The new Beverly? That theater on Beverly, like that movie, the old movie theater? Um, I don't know. It's like by Lachma-ish. Okay. Yeah, so by Lachma, like yeah. kind of by there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Closer to the west side? Yeah, because there's some taco stand there that they interviewed the owner. Cool. Yeah. And so what did they ask you? They, so their whole thing was they wanted to ask um, like a diversity of people who are immigrants that are from Mexico what life is like for them here. What'd you say? Uh, LA is expensive. <laughs> You're like it could be better. <laughs> it could. It definitely could be better. Um, they, you know, it was a lot of questions about the current state of immigration and um, a lot of stuff because I'm DACA, and so they wanted to ask me like, oh, what what's it like being DACA and what is it exactly and can you elaborate on it? Yeah, yeah cool. Did you like the interview? Yeah, they were cool. Um, How long was it? It was like five minutes or something. Oh, yeah, it was a short interview. Yeah, I cool. think because it's gonna be like a news thing because it, so it has to be like a short segment or something. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Also, I just want to mention this is what I was gonna say is that I'm talking very low and my chair is very low because this mic was not having it with me. So for anybody watching this, the two people watching this, that's why we look. Disproportionate. Yeah, disproportionate. That's a good word. Um, I learn a lot of words like when I do these interviews. Not learn, but I'm like, oh, that's a word I, I should use in my vocabulary. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Getting ready for for local interviews. government. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's I like that. Yeah. <laughs> His budget's disproportionate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're so you came here at eight years old. Do you remember anything like from when you were a kid? Yeah, I I remember Mexico very vividly and you know, I think I'm strange in that sense because I identify myself more from over there than over here. Why? I think because of my family and how much they ingrained in me. Mm-hmm. And and my aunts made an effort to come see me and my brother here as much as they could. And so I think that never left me. Um, and whenever I've had the opportunity to go, which isn't often, I'm always like, Oh shit, I'm from here. Like it feels like it. Yeah. Um, 
Um, what do people? How do people react when you say you work in the film industry? Do people do people become nicer to you when you say that? I think it depends. I don't know. Like it's, if you're talking to like a white person that's from like the Midwest or something, do they start to be nicer to you? If they live in LA, usually because they're usually here to do something in the film industry, right? And they're usually trying to get something out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Where they're like, oh, you, oh, you work in the film industry. Uh, th- here's my headshot, or, yeah. or like, oh, let me get your number. What's your Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. Um. I I can like say that that happened to me several times when like I don't know when I was doing events people like <laughs> thought like I was something or they would think me and Joan were like something like you know in yeah. the entertainment industry and then they would start being nicer too you, Yeah I can confirm you guys are pretty legit though so I I would feel like oh here's my card too I mean I I guess I did cool. that too cuz I remember I helped you guys Yeah out I remember it. you Um Thanks for helping us. I got it. That shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. Like, how did, like, I mean, obviously we had our friends that, like, helped us out and stuff. But, like, I don't know how the fuck we did that. I I still to this day don't know either. And I know people that went to it that, like, people still talk about it. It's crazy. Really? Yeah, people still talk about it. Yeah. No way. Yeah. You know, John's told me that, that people still talk about it. But I, I don't want to believe it. I like to think that Joan just says things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it's funny. I can confirm, like, people that went to it were always like, oh, yeah, did he ever go to this event? And I was like, yeah, dude, I know I know the people that, <laughs> that it. organized it. It's crazy. They, like, did that shit for free. They didn't get like, paid for any of it. Yeah. That was a big part. Yeah, which is important. Yeah. It kept, like, the authenticity of just what we were trying to do and stuff. Um, and I think that was, it was really fun to do that with, you know, work with different people too. Yeah. Um, but let's, um, let's not talk about us. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I remember the past. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So how did you get into the film industry? Hmm. I, so I went to school for film. Yeah. Um, which you would think, oh, that's like, that's how you get in, but that's, not how you it's get not. in. Okay, no, so would you all. tell people to go to school for film if they want to work in film? I think at best the thing to do is to get an AA. If you if if like old me is like yeah, thinking like about, looking back and stuff. Yeah, like what would you do? Because I went to community college too, and I think what I learned in community college was a lot more valuable than what I learned in. When I got my bachelor's. Interesting. Um, what I, did you learn when you got your bachelor's? I think in my bachelor's, it was a lot of reading and a lot of writing. Okay. And I think a lot of people have similar experiences. Where my AA was a lot more technical. I feel like because I just kind of went and did whatever when I was in community college. I feel like it gives you an opportunity to explore and learn things that you wouldn't otherwise. Without the pressure of like, oh, this is costing me a lot of money yeah. over time. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I think that's what, like, the beauty of community college is. Yeah. Like, some people try to, like, you know, oh, you didn't get accepted to college. Um, But community college is cool because you actually get to find more about yourself and, like, learn more without the pressure of, like, now I need to do something with this, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I had a lot of teachers in high school who went to community college, too, and they they recommended it very highly because they were, like, when they went to get their bachelor's, they were like, I felt like I was a lot more prepared than, you know, the other people that were in the same, like, classes yeah. that I was. Yeah, like, people that just, like, graduate high school and then they go to university. Yeah. For sure. Because yeah. yeah. I also think they don't have that maturity to, like, really appreciate where they are, where they are, like, what they're doing and, like, kind of, like, that focus, too. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think... Because you also get to explore in community college, you get a chance to figure out what you like and what you don't. So by the time, you you know, you're getting your bachelor's, it's like, oh, this is what I want to do. So yeah. let me do it. Yeah. You know, for sure. I, I agree. That happened to me in community college. And I'm still glad that I went, even though I don't know if I'm really doing anything with that degree. But I at least I did something that I like to do and I'm interested in. And yeah, that's what's important. 
But I know that in the entertainment industry, a lot of people kind of just like learn on the job, right? It's, you know, it's, it's very true um, that it's better to just, if you have the opportunity to get in, to just do it and learn because it's a whole different world. And at the end of the day, I think even because I work when I want to college, I think that work experience was more valuable to me working in the film industry than going to school was. Yeah. Because in my industry, there's a lot of politics and there's a lot of dealing with personalities, and especially big personalities. When you say politics, what do you mean? I mean that there's a lot of like, I think we should do this and this is why. And then someone else will be like, no, I think we should do this. And this, these are my reasons. I mean, a lot of times they're not as nice about it. Um, there's a lot of fighting in the film industry. There's a lot of big personalities. It's not <laughs> It's not easy. Um, so I think learning to work with other people, like, you know, <laughs> a lot of the people that I've worked with in the film industry always, like, like, compare it to group projects in school. Okay. Where it's like you're put in a group of people, like they just randomly choose a group of people and then they're like, here, make something. And then you have all these different personalities and you'll have people that literally are just there, not do anything (laughs) and then get credit. Like in school, remember? Yeah. What's the point of having them there then? It, there's a lot of nepotism in the film industry. (laughs) Yeah. Let's talk about nepotism. We don't have to talk about it right now, but that's like one of my things that like, (sighs) It's just so obnoxious. Yeah. That, there's a lot of it in my industry. And, you know, I I was lucky I worked with a guy that taught me a lot about the industry and taught me a lot of technical things. Um, so how did you start off? Like, um, so. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, you're, you're good. Okay. Let's, let's, we'll circle. Go let's, ahead. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> so I graduated school. Um. And what happened was I started coaching soccer because I had nothing else to do. And I, um, so I was just coaching soccer and doing like other jobs and stuff. And then a friend of mine, I'll, I'll give you the longer story. So when I was in school, (laughs) (laughs) when I was in school, I worked at the W hotel in Hollywood. Okay. And it was a horrible job. And it taught me a lot about working with people. And I bet I made a friend with this. We're still friends to this day. Her name's Jennifer. She's awesome. Really funny person. Um, She also studied film, but we both kind of like went our own paths. And then when I graduated school, she had already started her job at a VFX company. And so she posted on Facebook saying, at the time I was coaching kids soccer, she was like, Hey, um, does anybody need a job? The company I work for is hiring. They need a PA receptionist, um, someone who could just roll with the punches. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh, I'll go. And so they, you know, I go in an interview and I think I got very lucky in the sense that, she gave me the opportunity to go in because she like recommended me highly because we had worked together and she she knew knew what I was about. And so I went in and I got very lucky that the owner of the company, um, his name's Matt Beck. He's, he, he goes way back, man. He's like, he worked on the original Dune. What? Yeah, it's crazy. I Never, still haven't seen Dune too. My boyfriend keeps telling me to. <laughs> I I haven't seen it either. Okay. I want to, but I've been so busy. For me, I, I keep telling him like I have to mentally be in the like a, re- a good state to be like, okay, this is what I'm watching. Like you know, like I have I was, like there are days where he's like, let's watch Dune too, and I'm just because he's already seen it. He yeah. wants to see it again. And I'm just like, I'm too tired. This isn't going to work. Like, yeah, you don't want to fall asleep. Yeah, or there's something. like all like, these reasons why I'm like, it's not time yet. <laughs> and you've never read the books or anything like no, that. I no, I haven't. It's going to get wild. Really? So it's like, just get ready. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, it's it gets wild. Okay. But if 
once you get watching the second Dune, just if you ever have the time, do me a favor and watch the original Dune. Okay. Because it's a it's wild. You know, it took me a lot of attempts to finish Dune, just like Dune, Dune one. One, yeah. It, was it like an airplane thing? Like how you were did just you like, know? Fucking, I don't yeah. know. It's like when whenever people <laughs> tell me that, it's just like, did you finish it on a plane? Like it was, it was told. Okay, so yeah, so there were times in the plane, and it was a long flight, so I kept falling asleep, and then I would wake up, and then I'd be like, okay, where was I? <laughs> and then I just like kept going back to finish Dune. <laughs> Um, but I got, I got like the whole concept and idea of it. So, but I'm glad I did actually take multiple takes because I don't think I would have been able to absorb all of it in one take. I I could see that, you know, I, I know a lot of people that just saw it once and they were like, oh, this was kind of boring or this, yeah. like I didn't, it wasn't for me, but I feel like there was a lot in it, but yeah. you just kind of had to like take it in. Absorb right? it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that happened to my boyfriend too. He he saw it once and then he was like, I don't know if I really liked it. And then he like read into it and he, you know, started like learning more about like what he had saw and then he saw it again. And then he's like, no, I love, I love this movie. Yeah. It, you know, it's crazy. I, cause I read the books like a long time ago and I was like, I've been waiting for this moment for yeah. a long time. And so when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, this is legit. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw, they're making a TV show about the Benny Gesserit. I don't know. So Paul's mom, you know okay. how she, they're like the crazy witches. Mm-hmm. They're making a TV show about that. And um, they're like making other projects around the same world. Okay. Because if you read the books, it's like insane how expensive that universe is. Okay. So there's just like a lot going on that it can't fit into just like a movie basically. Yeah. And for me, it's a good thing because there's more work. And you get like side stories and stuff and you get to like really understand what the movies are about and everything. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's going to be sick. Okay. So you're talking about someone named Beck. Yeah. Matt Beck. Okay. He, he worked on the original Dune. Yes. So I interviewed with this guy and he came from like um, his parents were kind of like working class people in Boston. So whenever he saw somebody that came from like a working class background, I feel like he identified. Right. So me and him like talk and he had this little dog named Coco with him and like he (laughs) goes everywhere with that dog. And like he just, it was just a conversation. And then he's like, you know what? You're hired. Start tomorrow. (laughs) And that's so Hollywood. I know. he The dude's. All Hollywood. Like yeah, he's, like he, nobody does that anymore. They're no. Like, you have to do the paperwork and like do the background check. And <laughs> you, you're going to laugh when I say it. <laughs> I'm this, but now that you say it, like it's Hollywood. I literally, it was in his office and he had like a black leather couch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Castle yeah, couch. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then he like had a control that like closed the door. Oh. And so when you say Hollywood, I yeah. was like. Maybe I I was I got into some shit. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a test. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It was like, uh, <laughs> um, um, okay. So he told you to start working for him, and you're doing PA work. Yeah, PA and receptionist. I was like literally picking up the phone, which yeah. it's it it's so funny they had me doing that because it was literally all like spam calls all day. Like there was no like actual calls. People calling you, yeah. but it was like, oh, go get groceries and stuff, and like. Like errands. Yeah. Stuff. Fix the storage room or can you go get this for me? Uh, stuff like that. And I I got to work with some really cool people that had work on like stuff that I had seen growing up. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. So I would start asking them questions about it. And they were like super open about teaching me what they did and how to do it myself. Yeah. Um, And he was a big example of that because... Um, like, my first week, I remember it was, like, Friday. It's like, you know. And he came up to me, and he was like, hey, new guy, do you know how to use cameras? And I was like, yeah. I Yeah, I know how to use cameras. He's like, okay, cool. Um, On Monday, you need to drive to Orange County and meet me here at, like, 5 a.m. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, have you ever seen a call sheet? And at the time, I had it. And so he, he sends me a call sheet, and he's like, all right, we're going to go. We're, we're going to go shoot something, um, which, you know, I, 
part of BFX, a lot of people think you're just in front of a computer, but it's really important for us to be on set. BFX? Yeah. Like, okay. uh, uh, so I work in the visual effects industry, which is like we make CGI and all the stuff that isn't in the camera that they shot, like any additional that stuff that's added digitally. Yeah. That's the industry I work at. And so it's important for us to, for people who work in VFX to be on set because there needs to be someone to say like, hey, we should shoot it this way because if you don't, the VFX is going to look like shit. Okay. Or, you know, or, hey, we we need a green screen here because so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and there's also a lot of, um, like, data that needs to be gathered for the people to actually do the work. Um, and you've probably seen in movies they have that, like, gray ball and that, like, has that shiny thing on it. No. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's like a thing. Maybe someone who's listening has seen that. Yeah. And so they'll usually shoot that and somebody, like, stands in front of the camera and they'll, like, go like this. Okay. It's, like, synonymous with VFX and a lot of people are always like, what's that for? Yeah. What are you guys doing? Um, and there's a reason why. It's usually when, you know, if you shoot something and Optimus Prime is supposed to be in that shot, you need to have reference of where the lighting is. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's for. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, just, like, when I think about how when, like, artists, when they paint things and, like, they need to like keep the light in this, like let's say they come back to it. They need to keep the light in the same place to continue that painting. So the lighting's like, let's say they're drawing with the lighting and shading and stuff. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Kind of. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> and you know, it's some VFX people are like, no, it's not like, like that kind of stuff at all. And some people okay. do agree with that. Like yeah. sentiment that it. Also, I know that I think I've heard in like um, movies or like in like behind the scenes stuff, how like sometimes some stuff doesn't make sense. Like in the universe, in the actual like living world, that light can't be coming from that direction or something like that. Yes. I don't know who I've heard that say that. I think it was like a scientist or something who was like, there's like, it might've been like Titanic or something where they're just like saying how like that, Wherever the light was coming from or the sun was, like, shining, like, wouldn't have made sense during it, that time yeah. around that. Yeah. It, and, and there's so much of that. And it, it's it's interesting, too, because there's, like, sometimes the people that do the visual effects are aware of this. And it comes down to whoever is running the project, like, the director or the producers, to be like, no, 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 put the sun right there. <laughs> yeah. And then VFX people are like, no, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because... So and so, and they're like, no, <laughs> make it make sense. And it's like, okay, whatever yeah. you want, you're paying us. True. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. That have politics again. Okay. There's a lot of politics in my industry. Those are the politics. Yeah. There's politics everywhere, though. But yeah, in the entertainment industry, it's very like, um, I think the entertainment industry is a reflection. Like we were talking about how like a lot of people project their failures let's say they wanted to go in the entertainment industry. They project if they failed, they just blame it on LA and Hollywood being a shitty place to live. And in reality, it's more just like, you're just mad because it didn't work out for you. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a hard industry to get into. And like, I'll be the first to say, I was like absolutely lucky that I was in the right place in the right time. Yeah, for and sure. I, and I was given that opportunity and I'm, I am forever grateful to all the people involved. Um, but for some people it's, it's like there's so much involved into trying to get in. And, you know, we talked about Nepo babies earlier. Like there's so many, <laughs> there's so much of that in this industry right. where it was like, Oh, this person's my son. It's like cool. teach him this. You know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, how did you? You don't have to fully be honest because I know, like, I don't want your job to be affected by anything. But if you can, like, how did you feel about the writers' strike? I my like emotional opinion of it is that it was very difficult for a lot of people in the industry because. Um, you know, there was a lot of people that went 
unemployed during the strike, but I think it was completely necessary in any strike moving forward. I think it's completely necessary because of the conditions and the, like how much people are getting paid in the industry. Right. Um, these, these are jobs that are becoming unlivable. Uh, you know, back in the day you had people that were able to afford a house by being writers on like TV shows or writers on, on, on films. Right. And now I feel like it's become so like their jobs are so exploited that it's unlivable. Um, I think I heard a story of like one of the guys that wrote the bear. Okay. Had to like ask somebody like that he knew for money to rent a suit to go to the Emmys. Oh man. That's crazy. Like that to me is crazy. And I know writers myself that a lot of their job ends up being thrown away anyway and unpaid for. Like they have to do a lot of work and then they go to a studio and they're like here and the studios would be like, okay, um, can you make these changes? And like, they'll go do it for free thinking like, Oh, this this is going to get the project off the ground. Right. Then they take it to the studio and they're like, Oh, you know what? We'll think about it. Yeah. I can see that's like frustrating and annoying. I guess like when I think about it and you know, I'm trying to think of life. As you as you grow up, I feel like you start to see life differently and you start to try to understand things a little better. Uh, what I'm getting at is when that writer strike was happening, I was like, fuck those people. They're assholes anyway. Like, they're all Nepo babies. Like, yeah. you know? But it's not all of them. It's probably a good amount. But, like, yeah. there are some people that are, like, decent people who were affected that actually, you know, really needed that or yeah. they actually worked hard and stuff. And they're, like, struggling and, and all that stuff. It, it, I think, like, in any industry, in any walk of life, like, things are more complex. Than exactly. What we see them all like, off the get-go. And, like, I think I've gained, like, a clearer perspective on the film industry because when I used to look at it from the outside it was like you kind of glamorize it but then when you're in it you kind of see things differently yeah and with the writer strike it, it was what I saw was that a lot of the people that were like in the front lines and stuff were usually like the people that are like down to earth because my understanding of the statistics of it is that only like a small percentage or like have constant employment mm. within the writers. And I'll, I was like, this is, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I was going to say another reason I was frustrated with the writer's strike was because when I have been, I mean, I don't know when this happened, probably within like the last eight years, a lot of movies had either a boring storyline it was a sequel. It was a prequel. There was like no original storyline or yeah. original stories that were being told. And I think that also frustrated me with a lot of the things that I was seeing on TV shows, on movies. And I was just like, yeah, like it's a lot of it, in my opinion, is just a bunch of white people repeating the stories that they think are, is going to work. And it's not enough people of color that are telling authentic stories You know, uh, do you know who Leo Gonzalez is? I've heard the name, yeah. He's like an influencer, um, but he does a lot of like comedy sketches and clips and stuff. And so he recently did one of how Latinos in movies are always portrayed speaking like Spanglish. And like, you know, he gets all serious. He's like, you know, he's like, brother, but what about mama? What about, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and, like, he's just, like, saying, like, going back and forth with his English and Spanish and, like, you know, what about, like, I don't know. Like, he'll just say, like, some dumb shit that'll be, like, so typical for Hollywood to write in for a Latino's experience. And it's, like, so frustrating because either a whitewashed Latino wrote that or, like, some white person thinks that that's just all we are. And it's just, like... Oof. That yeah. kind of like would frustrate me when I was thinking about the writer's strike. 
But I think it's also important to look at like different perspectives yeah. of different people. I, I, you know, I, I wish there was a lot more <laughs> diversity in, in our industry <laughs> and me working in it. It's, it's crazy because you don't see a lot of like Latinx people or any POC. Like there's not that many. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like abysmal. Right. Where, when like, whenever you work with someone, you'll like spot them right away and you'll be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'll be like a hundred people <laughs> and it'll be like three of you, three of us. And then we'll all be like, yeah. we all kind of like clock each other. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, it's crazy again with the politics. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I can confirm a lot of like the stuff in Hollywood that that's been coming out. It's you know more than likely a white writer writing Latinx person right. or a person of color. Yeah, and I've worked on projects where that's been the case. Yeah. And you're kind of like, like you feel the cringe. Yeah. And I said that too loud. I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, there's there was one instance. God. Where like I I stood my ground because usually like I I try to be political, and and be like you know sometimes I don't say anything or sometimes I'll just be like hey, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Um, but in this one, I just, I was like, Hey, in, in my position, I just don't have the power to be able to be like, Hey, you should change the storyline unless somebody comes up to me and be like, Hey, like ask for your yeah, opinion, which has happened. Um, there was one instance where like, uh, they had to re ADR an actor What's and, that? like, so basically they messed up the lines when they filmed. And so what they were going to do is re-record that same actor, say different lines. And so they rewrote the script and then they were like very shyly about it. They were like, hey, Javier, um, I know this isn't your job, but you speak Spanish, right? <laughs> and it was like, can you check this dialogue to see if it's if it's good? And yeah. then I was like, no. <laughs> So then I just told them, like, maybe they should say this instead. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. At least they asked me, you know, and yeah. they're very respectful about it. But there was one instance um, I worked on a, can, I can't say names, um, but uh, there was one instance of, like, indigenous people being represented in this project. And the way they were being represented was, like, like it was very very problematic like yeah. very extremely problematic and so i told like my immediate producer like hey dude this is messed up <laughs> i know i can't say anything about it but you can yeah so if you can please and you know no one did anything about it because of course um uh, that dude was white so i don't think he cared much but mm -hmm. i was like at least at I least said, you voiced your opinion. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, and I tried to get my name off the project, too, but they also didn't allow me to. Um, but yeah, this one, and it, it was, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story about it um, that I find very funny. We went. I can't believe you tried to get your name off of the project. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something even funnier. The director tried to get most of our names off the project okay. just because they're very bitter and angry and like a horrible person. Um, about just like how the movie came out or how people reacted to the movie or like, um, or like they just weren't like happy. Just not happy in general. Okay. Just not, not a happy <laughs> camper at all. Uh, <laughs> but, um, the, yeah, so we went to shoot in Mexico, um, this movie, and so they had the, we went to like uh, a jungle in Mexico, and it was supposed to be the Amazon. Okay. Um, 
And so you have these indigenous people there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're like, uh, they had this one guy, like a white skin actor. <laughs> white skin. Yeah. In like uh, <laughs> brown face, I guess. Oh my God. Yeah. And <laughs> I just, I, I remember standing people in the jungle. People are still doing that. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. 2024. Yeah. And the Mexican crew. So that land is like literally owned by indigenous people, like the Chol people. Yeah. And I, I made friends with this guy named David that's from there. Mm. And, and you know, we're like all hanging out. They're just like sitting, we're like sitting by some rocks and like the guy comes out and David's just like, what is that? <laughs> and I was like, I just went like, like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And he's like, that's so funny. That's so messed up. And so the Mexican crew recognizes the actor. Because he's like a known actor over there. Uh -huh. they, they're dying, dude. They were like, they were they were laughing their asses off. They're like, oh my God, is that this guy? Oh my God. And one of the camera guys, who's like Mexican, he goes up to the guy and he's like, hey, they forgot to put the bone right here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, wow, <laughs> this is this is happening. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so cringe. It it it's super cringe. Um, I hate, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no like authenticity, original storylines. At least from there's like probably a good amount of movies that I've seen, maybe. But like, I feel like I keep running into like the same. Just like s sounds, it seems like the same story. It's like not original, or it's just like a Marvel movie, <laughs> or it's just like a prequel or a sequel yeah it, yeah no I, I i know exactly what you feel and i i think that the current box office um it's like people are tired yeah and that's why movies aren't making what they used to True. um because why would i pay like 20 bucks to see something i've already seen or something yeah. that i'm not gonna be happy do you think any of that like it, well obviously the movie theaters are affected by like streaming and stuff so I mean, do you think the money's just more going to like Netflix and like like Amazon Prime or whatever, like Hulu? Just based off like what work is out there, there's a lot of money in streaming services, but I know for a fact like movies pull in a lot of money. It's just that I think when like you know people say like oh people don't want to watch superhero movies anymore or people don't want to watch action movies anymore i just don't think people want to watch bad movies anymore oh interesting yeah it's an interesting take you know before you continue we'll come back to that but my friend had told me not too long ago he was like you know like with yelp and stuff like us as people we just don't want to even explore or try different foods, we want to make sure that it's like a hundred percent going to be a good meal. Like, you know, obviously now yeah. I feel like you don't have the choice to take that risk. Cause like food is so expensive, <laughs> but like, yeah. Back in the day before there was like ratings and things like that, people were just able to try like what's good, you know, and yeah. like then find out what they don't like and then things like that. But anyway, I, I think there's also, you know, some truth to that because um, I have seen this pattern of like people, like a lot of people just gravitate towards what they like yeah. in the film industry. So I think we're, that's where a lot of like sequels and stuff like that um, do really good because people are just like, there's nothing else that I think is good. Yeah. I might as well waste my money like on something that I'm already familiar with. True. I guess. I'll I'll never forget how much I hated Hocus Pocus 2. Oh boy. <laughs> it was so bad. Like I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, oh my God, why why did we need to make a sequel about this movie? Like Yeah, it and especially because, like, you watch the original and you're just like, this is perfect. It's a perfect it's movie. Like, just leave it. Just just leave it alone. Um, you And it's even funnier. To, I've never seen Hocus Pocus 2, but. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? And it, like, when I was, because 
I was in a movie that shot in Boston mm. and what I, what you learn in the film industry is like everybody knows each other. Yeah. And so if you work like somewhere like Boston, um, it's the same crew that probably were like that, like nine times out of 10, they work a similar, like another movie that was just there. Uh -huh. And so when I got to Boston, everyone was like, Oh, we just got off of Hocus Pocus too. <laughs> and so I like, I, I like had questions because I got to go to Salem. Okay. Um, and I recommend that town so much. I, I love that place is cause I love the movie as a kid. Yeah. And it was like a 20 minute drive from Boston. Uh -huh. So you go and you're just like, Holy shit, this is exactly what you expect. Um, they're very big on like the witch thing. And yeah, like yeah. even their police cars have like a witch on them and stuff like that. And the, the people there are so nice. Um, and so you're like, oh, did they? Because the original movie was shot in Salem, which right. I, th I think gave it like a sense of authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, no, we shot it in Rhode Island. And I was like, why? <laughs> who, who comes up with this these decisions? Yeah. And, um, location. Studios make a lot of weird decisions. I've come to learn in my when life. When I went to New York, I found out that Friends was not shot in New York, it was shot in LA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was like, that's, yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, the, I, it's, yeah, the, this industry is so fake. There's so much <laughs> fakeness that happens. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about how LA, a lot of going back to kind of what we mentioned, um, a lot of people get disappointed and they kind of project their failures onto LA and they like, call it names and they like say, you know, how much it sucks. And I don't know you, I'm sure you've experienced people in the industry that ha that say that, right? Yeah. It, I, I see it all the time where like people move here and even though like, if, let's say they become successful or like they're working in the industry, they're just like, Oh, LA sucks. <laughs> um, Is it like trendy to say that? I, you know, I, I think so. Um, <laughs> I, I truly do think it's in, in, I think it's been in style for a long time. Yeah. To just hate on LA. Yeah. Um, especially I, it, I find it funny because these people are trying to find something authentic in LA, but are also pushing the authentic out of out LA, of which is, you know, the communities that were already here. It's like a contradiction, honestly, yeah. for sure. And it's like, you know, just like how you're saying how people say, oh, it's so hard to make friends in L.A., but it's really a lot of people they're making friends with are the people that are also transplants not from L.A. Yeah. And, yeah. And usually these people, like, they don't call it making friends. They call it network networking. networking. And That's a popular yeah. term in the internet. <laughs> let me get your Let me get your Instagram. Let me get your TikTok, whatever. Yeah. And it's always like, dude, you don't want to get to know me you it's just, always work yeah you always want to see what i you can get out, out of, of me. me yeah yeah which is like crazy because like when you talk to like la people from la i almost said la locals but i, I don't know <laughs> i just don't like saying it too much um but when you talk to people from la you get people that are like more authentic more like they don't give a shit about hollywood more like they don't yeah. care about networking yeah they're like I know a good taco spot, like yeah. that's on the street. Like, yeah. let me hook you up. Yeah, and you know, on the on the on the flip side of things, I like I've worked with a lot of people that are transplants. Yeah, but they've been here for a long time, so they're like they got accustomed to like what LA is, and like yeah, I I I know people like that too that actually respect the city that they're in and like respect the people and the community and the cultures that are here, you know, yeah. it's a big city. Yeah. It, you know, I, I, if you don't like a place, um, <laughs> and you have the opportunity to go somewhere else and work, like don't stay here and hate. Just, yeah. Just go somewhere so, else, you know, like nobody wants more people not from LA here. Yeah. It's already so full and it's already rents already so high. Yeah. So, like I was saying, we need to build that wall. I'm just kidding. The California wall. Yeah. It, like, and I'm just joking, though. 
It's funny because it's, it's triggering <laughs> if for I have me. To, if I have to, cl- as, as I have to clarify. <laughs> That's my joke, though. I keep saying that joke, and I don't know if it, like, passes through people's heads, like, you know. It's it's fine because we're, we're brown. <laughs> I'm but, sorry. No, you're, good. you're like, I'm triggered right uh, now. I'm triggered right now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there, there's so much work out there in the film industry that's not in LA. So, you know, and I respect the people because I, I work with friends and they're just like, you know what? I didn't like LA. It didn't work out. Yeah. I'm going to go to Atlanta. Yeah. I'm like, good for you, man. Make that move. Make that move. <laughs> Get a cheap house, un- buy a house, which you can't do here. Where do you hear the entertainment industry? Like, where are they kind of going right now if they're not in? LA, Hollywood. I, you know. Like you I'll, mentioned Atlanta. Like that's mm-hmm. the spot too, right? Yes. So I have a theory. A lot of people say like, oh, the film industry is dying in LA, but it's been dying for the last 25 years. It's never going to go away. I okay. don't think because a lot of people that have money don't want to leave LA. Yeah. And usually those people are like, should I go shoot in Atlanta or should I go, should we stay out, shoot at Warner Brothers in Burbank? Yeah. Warner Brothers it is. So there's that, like that aspect of it. Like there's still a lot of work here. I think Atlanta happened because one, they have a tax incentive. So a lot of what dictates what happens in the film industry, at least in Hollywood is money. Taxes. Yeah. And taxes <laughs> is a big thing. So, um, Atlanta did a like a insane tax incentive that I have friends from Atlanta that have told me like that tax incentive um, has brought in like endless amount of work, but it's also like not beneficial to the state because the state's basically financing yeah films and it's it's insane because film studios have money yeah they just don't want to spend it so it's tax incentives. Um, New York also has one. So there's a lot of work in New York. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in New York. Mad respect to anybody who works in New York. <laughs> that place is insane. Do you like New York? I, I love New York. You do? Weird. I did not okay. like working in New York. I, do you like New I York? I don't like New York so far. Oh. I, I'm willing to like go back and give it another shot. I just didn't like it. It's too fast paced for me. It, it's fair. I think like it's not. It's also, not for the pizza is really hyped. Like, you expect to go to New York and be like, oh, damn, this is, like, the best pizza. It's so cheap. And in reality, one thing I've learned about, like, traveling so far when I've traveled is that L.A. has a lot of authentic places. And we get kind of the best of everything. That That is true. And I think, like, because it's L.A., we get a lot of, like, bad rap for, like, we don't have good food from yeah. places like New we York. We have the best Mexican food. We do. Yeah. We do. Like, I've, you know, I've, it's hard to find good Mexican food in New York. There is, but I you know. have to find it. Yeah. Seriously. Um, but here, like, we have good pizza, too. We do have good pizza. We have, and we have a pizza. lot of people from New York that came that come to L.A. and have a store here. So it's like it's just as good, honestly. And in New York, I know they're like, oh, it's the water. And there's like pizza <laughs> spots that literally like ship water yeah. to make the dough. Yeah. And it's like, OK, <laughs> that seems wasteful. <laughs> but. I'm going to New York people are going to hate me for saying this, but. Because I was in Boston for like six months. Yeah. Um, Boston has some of the best pizza I've ever had. It's crazy. Like, yeah. And I never thought of Boston as like a food town. Yeah. Some of the best food I've had is in Boston. You know, some of the best food I've had other than LA is in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And like you don't hear like, oh, go to Chicago yeah. for, for, food. for food. You know, it's like, what's in Chicago? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I bet. I. Yeah. I I can't remember Chicago food, but I bet it's bomb. It is. Yeah. There's a lot of like different types of food. They they I mean, I was just really pleased with the restaurants that we ate at and I just can't say the same for New York. I'll give it another shot someday. I I you know, I think I really respect your opinion just because based on what I know about you, you've traveled way more than I have <laughs> in life. And so I think I'm like trying. you would know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like just 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 for my knowing, where is the place that you've gone to that has the best food? In Chicago or just in L.A. or in general? No, in general, like the world. 
Um, okay. Well, I just came back from Thailand. Was it bomb? It was so bomb. Oh, man. So good. But I was telling people that a lot of our Thai food here is actually similar to, like, how they make it in what? Thailand. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Because that's not, like, what usually happens. Right. Yeah. It's like you'll get, like, a little bit or well, something. That's what I'm saying. Like, we have so much, like, we have a lot, like, so much diversity in their yeah. city that, like, you get immigrants coming from all over the world to live here and open their business and then share their recipes and their foods and like we kind of get the best of everything um but also um i would say yucatan has some of the best food oh, i've shit, ever yeah. fucking had yeah like dude. i still like can't forget like the flavors and just like the freshness of all the food um so yeah i would say yucatan now i think about it that's cool <laughs> yeah no it I think it's like also in a region we kind of for like that's in Mexico that we kind of ignore yeah. the food of or like we don't get a lot of it yeah. here. Um, yeah, it's that that's cool. I would say also there's like so many different parts of Mexico and there's so many different types of like meals and recipes like all over the country. So a lot of it's different, you know, yeah. like in Yucatan, they use like the banana leaves to make tamales and in, you know, like Mexico City, they like use corn. like, yeah, corn the corn. Yeah. So it's just like, there's different types, just like I'm sure here, like, you know, we make pizza different on the East it, Coast. And yeah. Like, than what it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's a good example. <laughs> um, Cause I live um in El Sereno now and uh-huh. you know El Sereno cause yeah. you know. I went to school there. Oh, that's funny. Where, uh, where do you go to school? Um, you know, in Huntington, there's a private school called Our Lady of Guadalupe. No way. <laughs> I went there for three years. I live off of Huntington. So okay. it's like, I, yeah, I live right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't give your cross streets. No, I, 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 I <laughs> won't. Yeah. You're going to have people. The I'm being seriously stalkers are going to follow you. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> all, the, uh, all the people that are from... Island Park, and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> he's right there. Yeah, so I went to school there for three years. Um, my aunt lived in, um, she lived on Col, not actually, my uncle lives on Collis still. And then my aunt lived on, fuck, what's up? It starts with a B. I don't know. For me. Anyway, <laughs> it gets stuck. But so you went to school <laughs> there. The best pizza I've had is from El Sereno. Which is, is- this a place by Huntington? Uh, it's called Dough Box, okay. and now it's in Highland Park. Oh, okay, because they lost their location to a coffee shop. Okay, and so, like, Dough apparently box. they were there for a long time, and then, like, the owner was like, "You guys aren't paying enough rent. I'm gonna get a new tenant." Yeah, and so they got kicked out, and now they share their location with a panaderia that's in Highland Park. Okay, that's, which one? It's by the lodge. It's like right off of. Um, it's like. Closer to um, the bowling alley. Okay. So the Highland Park Bowl. Huh. It's, it's I like, don't think I know what you're talking about. It's like by Bank of America. There's like a Bank of America there. Oh, yeah. That's like Figueroa. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's, it's, it's on fi- Figueroa? I think so. It's um, it's not the Lysias, right? I think so. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, because like I said. <laughs> I was like, he, he probably knows what the Lysias is. So. Well, it's funny because I like. Kind of hung out in Pilot Park okay. during high school, but didn't know it that well. Okay. So I just like, oh, the, the panaderia there. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's right next to Bank of America. Oh. So Dope Box is in the same. No panaderia. way. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for me, I always like think when I drive by on Figueroa, I'm always just like, God, I fucking like this place is like a freak show. Like it feels just like. <sighs> Like, there's so many people that are walking on the street that are clearly not from L.A. <laughs> and I don't yeah. know how to make that, like, make more sense, but L.A. people know. No, it, it, <laughs> it, I, I totally get where you're coming from. And I also get that. Like, ick? That same vibe. And it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting, too, because, like, I live in El Sereno. Yeah. And El Sereno hasn't had that boom yet. yet. But it's, it's in progress. I I see it when yeah. I'm on Huntington. Like I see like things happening. Um, eh. I mean, you know, I I grew up in South Central, and 
like South Central people would always say like, we're never going to get gentrified. Like never. It's impossible. It's never going to happen. It's happening though, right? Yeah, no, it's absolutely happening. I remember some of like, you know, homies I grew up with that like, uh, like live closer to USC than Uh I did because I lived a lot more South. And they were like, no, no, they're never going to like, there was like a street MLK. Like they're never like white people are never gonna cross MLK, and then it was like they're crazy. Yeah, and then like white people <laughs> move next door to him, and it's like ah shit. And then it's just like one family, two, and then you know I think there especially because of students. Yeah. Um, because it's cheap to live there or was right. at least. Um, but like where my parents live, that's like deep South Central. It was always like, it's never going to get gentrified. It's impossible. It's never going to get gentrified. And like on the block where my parents live, there's white people. Yeah. And I remember the day. Like I went to Home Depot (laughs) on like Slauson, the one in front of like the Slauson Mall. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's like a level of hood that was like, you you (laughs) never think you see white people. And then one day you're at Home Depot and it was like white people shopping. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. You knew it was a trip. Um, Okay. So Highland Park, it's like, it was predominantly Latino community. um, And like, you know, like I was telling you, like the avenues were like a few blocks away from where I was living. And it was just like crazy. But when the gentrification started happening, I started seeing white people like walking their dogs. And then I started seeing black people, which in a Latino neighborhood is like not usually in a lot of them, at least from my experience, it's like not too common. Yeah. And I was like, there's black people. There's white people. Like what? It, it's kind of funny, but like you look at how we grew up and it's, it's funny. Cause I, I do get what you're saying. Yeah. Cause like East LA yeah. was like, predominantly like latin people yeah you know for sure and it's i think it's interesting now because la used to be like very segregated i feel like for sure. like like k-town was like korean people and yeah. like maybe a few latin people like here and there like salvadorians and yeah, shit. yeah 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 exactly <laughs> and i mean in south central you had both like you had the like black people and you had latin people right um and you know a lot of also Belizean people. Right. Um, but you get what I mean in like Northeast LA, East LA. It's yeah. Like I, I know exactly what like you Latino mean. People. And so when it, it's, it's funny because when you start seeing people of like different walks of life, it's like, Oh, this is good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. I, I think LA has changed so much. And you know, when I moved to El Sereno, it it was like a conscious move to be like, you know, I I was trying to find a place to live yeah. that was for me not in the valley, but close enough to the valley because of the film industry. Yeah, and um, I consciously made the move because being from LA, I was like, what neighborhood? Don't go to the west side. <laughs> yeah, don't go to the west side, and also like, what neighborhood? is like predominantly Latin people and um, like where I won't be making an impact of like gentrification, you know? So I I moved into like a mom and pop, like they own the house Mm -hmm. and they've owned it for years. And it's like, I'm renting it from them. And like, we have a good relationship and stuff like that. But even in my neighborhood, like in the short time that I've lived there, it's like next door, my neighbors were like Latin. And then, the owner sold the house and then right away, like white people <laughs> in it. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. And now I'm seeing the same thing you guys saw in Highland Park where it was like white people walking their dog yeah. at night. And to me, it's always like, it. it's always kind of like surprising. Yeah. It's like, it must be nice. <laughs> yeah. It must be nice. And <laughs> to I'll, not have a worry in the world. And it's also funny to me because I always have this thing like having grown up in LA where like you go to you know let's say you have like a week off for whatever reason like you know you're unemployed whatever you go to a coffee shop in like the afternoon and there's always white people there doing nothing just on a laptop randomly and I'm always like what do you people do what do you what do you do like you're doing puzzles in the middle of the day like how do you make money (laughs) I want, yeah. 
I want that. <laughs> yeah, we all want that. Like, I want to just talk to them and be like, what's the secret? What do you do? Yeah. Herbalife? Like, what is it? You know, <laughs> Bitcoin? I is don't know. Is it really just because you're white? Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. That must be frustrating. Do you ever feel like, do you ever get frustrated of working with so many white people? <laughs> <laughs> or you can't disclose that. I, For political reasons, I'll say no. White okay. people are wonderful. No, uh, I, I, So for like, okay, like to make it more political, um, are you about freeing Palestine? I stand for peace and I think what's happening over there, I think there should be like a ceasefire for sure. But um, it, it can be very frustrating in a sense that sometimes they don't, like you said, sometimes like a lot of stories are like, oh, this is so stereotypical. Right. Or this is This is like messed up. Yeah. And a lot of times they don't see that. And they're just like, to me, what frustrates me the most, honestly, is like sometimes like Hollywood will write things to like try to tuck out our like brown heartstrings and being like, oh, we'll, we'll give them stories about immigration. Right. Kind of like I was watching. I guess this came to my mind because I, I just saw a clip about the blind side, the blind side. Uh-huh. Um. And it was like Sandra Bullock, you know, being the white savior and stuff. And it's like at that time period, that movie was supposed to pull at everyone's heartstrings, you know, like, oh, she's oh, uh, such she's- a nice person. She's a great person. And like this poor black man, like, you know, he can't do anything for himself. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. he needs somebody to help him. And I just feel like Hollywood still gets stuck in that like pattern pattern of doing like the savior or like you know oh her mom's gonna get like deported if she doesn't like you know do this or whatever something like that it's always something yeah yeah, something like that like you're saying is trying to like pull at our heart and so whenever like a movie does that and like you know we're watching the movie with team members sometimes a lot of like older people that i work with like I guess they get swept up by that, emo- like, you know, oh, their parents going to get deported. Oh. Yeah. And then they look at me like I'm supposed to feel that. <laughs> like they almost like romanticize like this, like feeling of yeah. like, oh, if my mom was feeling was in that situation, like I would feel so like, you yeah. know, and it's like, no, like. It would be better if a person was authentically telling the story or writing the story because that shit does really happen, you know? Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like you don't need to tuck out our heartstrings. Like, we live this kind of shit yeah. day to day. Like, we all have family members that are going through some shit. We've all... Yeah. Um, And, you know, I, I saw a lot of it in film school, too, with, like, film professors where, like, they'll show us um movies like that, like, you know, mi familia or stuff like that. And they'll be like, so what's, what's your, what's your take on this? What do you, you know? And it's like, dude, okay. Do you, have you ever experienced people using you as a token? Do you mind being a token sometimes? And I'm sure it's so complex because it's like, there's not that many like brown people in the writing rooms or in the entertainment industry in general. So like, I'm sure those people that are in the entertainment industry, they're like kind of just running with it. Yeah. I. But also like, I'm sure they've been like tokenized as well. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it gets so interesting. Cause you know, it, sometimes when there's a lot of like, when you're in a production, it's a lot of people, especially being on set. When you like see other people of color, it's literally like, You'll lock eyes and you'll go like this. Like, yeah, okay, we're here. <laughs> cool. We made it. We we made it. Cool. <laughs> um, but it does happen and I find it happens mostly with like a lot of old white dudes. Um, where they'll be like, Javier here's Mexican, he knows. And it's like, dude, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. You I, hired a Mexican. <laughs> yeah. I don't be like, oh, my friend here is white. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, you know, it, it does happen. Um, I, uh, the, the <laughs> most messed up moment I had with that is like, 
when they had like those indig- indigenous loincloth people. There was like in that movie you were talking about. Yeah, it was like one main character, right? And apparently they couldn't find someone to cast the guy. And a producer literally comes up to me like we're in an oh we're God, all in an no. office space, and he's like, "Hey, Javier." If they don't find someone, they're, we're just going to look at you one of these days and just put you in that suit. And my face is just like, bro, no. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, that's yeah. fucked up. Um, but that does happen. There's a lot of weirdness in the film industry. and Things I, that they think are funny and they're not. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that. Like, did you ever see um, Black Panther 2? I did. I did. You know how they shot, like, the indigenous people? Um, I forget what they're called. I think they even shot it in Yucatan too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. D- how did you like? T- did you think that they portrayed it well, even though it was obviously like made up? But like, still, the fact that they were indigenous. Um, like, what did you think about that? I, you know, in that movie, I think they did a good job because I think so too. They did research. Yeah. They went it in. It matters. Yeah, and they did research. And I, from what I heard, because I worked with some people that worked in that movie, is they really made an effort to, like, ask the people that were acting and working in it as well. Yeah. And they also had, like, experts. Yeah. Um, In the movie that I worked on, <laughs> there was none of that. <laughs> and on top of that, uh, I think, like, they hired some linguists, like, white person linguist to try to make up a language oh no and i don't think it was ever shown in the movie but it was like pure gibberish oh god and i was like yeah i was like that's that's crazy like that's so (laughs) messed up like on top of that you paid somebody to make up some shit like yeah um but yeah this industry is crazy i i i think that movie was an exception with that because i've been in those rooms where like in terms of representation, you're just like, yeah, you, you guys really missed the mark. And I, you know, I, I, whenever I watch movies and I see stuff like that, I'm just like, having been in those rooms, I'm like, yeah, I, I know who was there and who made the decisions, and like, I, I already know. <sighs> there's not a lot of diversity in the film industry, so it's like, oh, it's kind of obvious why things are presented right. the way they are. I mean, I feel like for people that, you know, it's so sad that it's like new to have more people of color in the in- entertainment industry, like on in the back end of everything. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like, and what I'm trying to get at is like people hating on JLo. <laughs> <laughs> um, what she do? Because I have no idea. Um, yeah, I, I've seen some of that, and I was like, <laughs> I'm so confused by do? it. Yeah. But it's more like, from what I'm understanding, it's people that are hating that she's not authentic and that she uses the Bronx to kind of like sell things, and uh, she doesn't give it back to her community and stuff. Hmm. And that might be true. I don't yeah, know I don't enough know. about J Lo or care that much about her, but I do know that I loved Selena. That was like my favorite movie as a little girl. Sick, yeah, and I loved like you know a bunch of other movies that she did. You know when I was growing up, yeah. um, and I just think that like she paved a lot of you know paths for people, especially Latinas, to like get into this entertainment industry, and. I don't know. I mean, maybe it wasn't all her, but she was a person that was a good influence on that path. Yeah, you know? I, 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 I would agree with that because I mean, you you look at like the history and us watching movies growing up. There was no one. Yeah, like before J Lo, like who what who right? I can't even think of like another Latina who was there doing shit. You know, right? And it's like it would have sucked if they would have casted the. F- a fucking white girl for Selena. Like, yeah. At least like she is a Latina and I mean, she's probably not the greatest person, but I also think there's a lot of hate um, and sexism in that, like this hate towards JLo. And I think, you know, there has to be a lot of men that are fucking assholes to people and they don't give back to their community and they probably represent and use their community a lot. Yeah. 
But I also feel like because she's a woman, like it's just an easy target to hate on her. I, 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 I'm in the same boat. I, th- I think the same things. It's, it's like with women in the entertainment industry, it's like they just have the focus on them, and yeah. it's like you know the conversations all about them, and and you don't hear a lot of that stuff about Latinx men in the film industry, or just men or like, in general. Yeah, you know, and and. You know, with the Me Too movement, a lot of stuff came to light that was like, oh, shit. Even then, people still don't want to accept that men are fucking, like, you know, rapists and, like, that some men are, like, not as good as they think. And, like, I honestly think, like, Brad Pitt beat up his wife and, like, I don't think he's a good guy either. Yeah. You know, I I will say this. I think that this industry has a lot of huge personalities and um the way things work it's very like it's very easy to get burnt out i'm sure it's it's very easy to get burnt out and there's always somebody that's trying to get something out of you and so if jlo's behaving a certain way i'm sure she has her reasons because it's tough yeah I mean, i'm sure you have to set boundaries and shit like especially being like a big celebrity just like her yeah she, like i'm sure i'm not excusing her or, or anything i'm just saying like i'm sure as a woman you have to set a lot more boundaries than you would if you were a man and then not only that but she's also a, a woman of color so like there's more boundaries that you have to set too yeah Absolutely. Like, I I can't imagine what it was like for her going through this industry, especially because things have gotten better. Yeah. Um. But there's still a lot of improvement to go, but I can't imagine what it was like. Like, I hear stories of yeah. what the film industry was from, like, old timers that tell me, and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> how are you people alive? Like, Seriously. It sounds traumatic. It sounds like a lot of people probably have, like, low-key PTSD yeah. from just, like, a bunch of... I, I'm sure there's, like, bullying. I can imagine there's, like, bullying, like, taunting. There's a lot of, like, disrespect. Drugs yeah. and, like... And, inappropriate acts and and, you know with with how much money people make in this industry it's it's very easy to um like hide things yeah totally um like i've heard so many crazy i mean look at p diddy oh my god what the fuck he's like a perfect example he's been hiding shit for so long and i feel like all of that it's already like gone like like i haven't heard anything it's just like well it's because he's hiding but we'll see what happens i feel like it's just like a story that's gonna continue to unravel i yeah and we'll be there to see what happens yeah we'll see what happens with that but um so we can close out here but do you have any advice for anybody looking to be in the entertainment industry movies music i mean maybe have you worked in music or yeah i've worked a little bit in music um I think that... Would you say don't go to university <laughs> for film? <laughs> don't, I, it's funny. I, I, I heard the same advice from um, Mark Ruffalo. Is like try to stay in little, in as little debt as you possibly can. Whether or not that means you don't go to university or you find alternative ways to finish your university, but... I think that's really good advice because at the end of the day, money gives you freedom to do what you want to do. Right. And if you owe money or you have that financial pressure, you have less of an opportunity to do the things you want to do. In terms of getting into the film industry, um, I would say that just apply and when you find the opportunity, work hard because, you know, we touched upon Nepo Babies and someone gave me like some great advice. That Matt Beck guy, actually, he, he told me like, you're going to see a lot of Nepo Babies. Yeah. There's going to be a ton of them. Who have no work experience or yeah. talent probably. And and some good friends of mine are Nepo Babies too. And, you know, I tend to tell them like, yo, come on, man. <laughs> Who's the Nepo Baby you hate the most? <sighs> it's okay. You know, um, I'll, I'll say it for me. Say it. Um, 
Actually, you know what? I, I don't say it's like the most. I don't like Will Smith's kids. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. My, I might be projecting. Maybe I'm jealous of them. Um, no, I'm not because their parents are terrible. <laughs> they seem like they suck. Um, I also don't like, how do you say, is it Judd Apatow or Tao? Oh, Apatow, I think. Apatow. I think I've heard Apatow. Okay. Um, I also don't really, I don't like him. So therefore, I don't like his daughter. Or daughters, I've seen um, her da- his daughter is like blowing up. She's now. like a crazy nepo baby. Yeah. Um, I just don't like him. Oh. I don't like his movies. It's very like, I don't know, Not very one sided, very like just white Jewish male comedy, and that, I'm not all about it. Oh. So. It's crazy because I grew up watching like his movies. Yeah, they were like big when we were. Yeah, they were really out. big and like freaks and geeks and stuff. Yeah, but I just don't like him, and I think like he, and he's he's not. Me and my boyfriend were just talking about how like Adam Sandler was always like the guy that won the hot girl over at the end. Yeah, Judd Apatow tried to do the same thing, and it's just like very unrealistic. Do you remember in that movie with Jonah Hill? Oh, he like super bad, super bad. Yeah. Where Emma Stone just like falls in love with him and is like, "Yeah, let's hang out." And it's like that would never in a million years happen it, with someone that looks like Jonah Hill. <laughs> it, especially because I feel like in Super Bad, it wasn't justified because he he did nothing. Like, yeah, it was just and and she didn't really have that much of a personality. It was yeah. just like, yeah, I like and you all, now. All the women in his movies hardly ever have personalities. That's like fair. it's always like the white guys that. They're like potheads and stoners and they're just like so funny and like, you know, they ended up getting like this hot girl like in uh, Knocked Up too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It were, it, yeah. It's just like, oh, it just happened. The woman magic. is just like a nag and she is like not funny and she's like, you know. Yeah. And, and then the guy barely puts in any effort and yeah. they just end up and together somehow. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so as I got older, I started seeing that and I'm like, no, I mm. hate Judd Apatow. You can that, go. That's fair. I never, you know, I never like revisited his movies. Like I just saw them yeah. as, as they were coming out. And I never was like, oh, I need to watch Super Bad again. Or I'll put it. Now that you're telling me this, I'm like, yeah, yeah, right? yeah this is, this makes a lot of sense. I, th- I think about stupid shit like this because I just like, I don't like the entertainment industry. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you'll be like one of those people that can like make it better, but I, I, I don't. Yeah. It's, well, maybe it's someday. bad. <laughs> maybe someday. I hope I, I, you know, I, I've met some great people. I'm and, sure. And, you know, there With is anything, hope. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there, there is hope. But, yeah, like, this last movie I work with, the two directors are from Belgium, and they their parents are from Morocco. And it's interesting because whole different experience in life. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, I identify with you guys so much because, you know, children yeah. of immigrants and stuff like that. And yeah. the, those guys were really cool. Yeah. I'll say that. So there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. So, okay. Well, we'll close out here. We went over an hour. Um, thank you for being here. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. You know, it's crazy. This is, um, yeah, no questions. I didn't write any questions. We kind of just like flowed off of this, which is cool. I like it. Yeah, that was cool. Thank you. Thanks.